So, recently, something happened that has a bunch of people uh, running victory laps in my messages. Um, not like, you know, more than ten, but enough that it's annoying. Um, so I figured that I'd address this. Um, the Afghanistan withdrawal isn't. Um, now, you're going to see a lot of headlines right now that say, like, the U.S. has left Afghanistan, that finally all the U.S. people are out of Afghanistan, and first off, that's an extreme maybe, because there's a lot that happens off the books. There's a shit ton that happens that the U.S. Uh, citizenry has no idea about. So the idea that because some public information says that there's nobody left there, there's nobody left there, is really fucking stupid. Um, and I can't understand why people who self-style themselves truthers um, and alternative media people suddenly catch a few headlines from the MSM telling them that the U.S. left Afghanistan, and then they're just like, yep, that's true. That happened. They did that. I don't need anything more. Um, like, it's upsetting, because in my experience, there's a shit ton of problems uh, with immediately believing people. Uh, especially uh, when there's such a clear profit and power motive behind their actions, right? So, ultimately, I think that uh, what we're seeing right now is, is a bait-and-switch, your classic, because the U.S. government wants the American people and the rest of the world to think... What a catastrophic withdrawal. What an awful thing. How bad is it now that Biden has pulled the troops out? And it would have been this way with any president, by the way. Um, because the whole point is that you stick it on one of them so that future administrations can, can clean up their mess and institute more policies and shit. But just to be super clear, um, the reason the Taliban are a problem is because of the U.S. The reason the Taliban exist is because of the U.S. To be very clear and extremely specific. This whole prom was created by the U.S. So the whole idea that the U.S. pulling out, allegedly, uh, is going to be the end of U.S. influence seems untenable. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I've got two pieces on, uh, on, on agorisnexus.com, which you can find by the link there. I'm going to flash it a few times. That link will, uh, well, the URL will take you to uh, the site that I write for, and I've written a shit ton of posts there. And two of those posts are on the Afghanistan situation specifically. Now, one of them went over how the U.S. will never really leave Afghanistan. It's called Will He, Won't He, He Won't. Afghanistan is too profitable to leave. And now some people are sending me, like, this article and running victory laps because that's what I said. Um, and I said this because the previous withdrawal deadline for Afghanistan was May. And Trump had already slated this to be May. It was already done. Um, and then Biden said 
give us a, <laughs> a couple more months. We'll do it in August. So I wrote this article, um, and I went over the history of the situation in Afghanistan. Basically, Russians had uh, been killing a significant amount of Afghani citizens for a significant amount of time. And uh, because of that, the Afghani people needed a little bit of support. Uh, the U.S. government chose to arm, fund, and train the Mujahideen. They ran an operation called Operation Cyclone, wherein they essentially they um, gave them money, they gave them guns, and they hired contractors and CIA people to fucking train them how to fight. Like, before the U.S. got involved, there were no fucking suicide bombings. Um, and before the U.S. started killing a significant amount of citizens, there weren't any either. This was just, like, a response to a situation that the U.S. created. And then suddenly there were suicide bombers, so the U.S. had even more reason to kill people. Now, they pushed Russia out of, you know, Afghanistan. Right. Sure. But they left behind a new group of people that they could fight. And that group of people would then eventually splinter off and become, uh, you know, Al-Qaeda, um, Al-Nusra, ISIS, and ISIL, and ISIS K now. We have the, 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 the special K of ISIS. Um, and all these sort of variants. It's sort of like it's sort of like the Koof, you know? Now we got the Delta variant. G gamma gamma cathode ray tube uh, special deluxe edition hollow foil. Uh, it's always going to be something new so that the US has a new excuse to fight. So, what was this, right? This was the instatement of the original nation-building plan in Afghanistan. And I use nation-building because it's their term, but I don't consider it nation-building because they're not even building a nation. They're just ensuring that their power can thrive over there. You know? Um... And, and when people ask me, um, you know, why, why the U.S. government would do that, I just, I can't, I can't understand how people don't look into what a country has to offer, right? Because that part should be the most obvious part. Uh, Afghani natural resources uh, are widespread. So are their opium trade. From the wiki, Afghanistan has over 1,400 mineral fields containing barite, chromite, coal, copper, gold, iron ore, lead, natural gas, petroleum, precious and semi-precious stones, salt, sulfur, talc, and zinc, among many other minerals. Gemstones include high-quality emerald, lapis lazuli, red garnet, and ruby. It's a treasure mine. And the idea that, there, that, that there's no incentive to, to police that area, especially hard, when that area is so wealthy, is just, it's so critically naive to me. But, you know, even if it's just a regional foothold thing, which it pretty certainly was, it ensures that the U.S., can continue their military operations because suddenly their capital is deeply entwined with military operations. There's a thing called the petrodollar, and that thing uh, basically means that you can only trade oil in dollars. Um, and the petrodollar 
uh, means that global economies are dependent on the oil trade for now. Until, of course, by the previous video, uh, the digital dollar is in place and they can just inflate by the whim of whatever they want. You know, until that's there, um, they have to find an excuse. Once that's there, they don't have an excuse they need anymore. They just fucking push a button and you have money in your account. And everything is more expensive. And all the prices adjust automatically. Isn't that going to be fucking great? But the point is that, like, that's what's there now. That's what the U.S. government has now. Is a dollar dependent on their seat at the head of a global hegemonic table. And, um, the Afghanistan situation has always been a source of that. And what this doesn't admit is that Afghanistan is also a chief exporter of opium. And has been for a really fucking long time. And that chief export of opium, with China right there as a neighbor, has always been an uh, elegant partnership. To set, so to say. And, you know, policing the region like that has always kept us economic partners with China. At least us, as in the U.S. You know, I don't really qu qualify as us anymore. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a heretic to that cult. But the point is that, like, this is profit. This is what profit is. It's a way to get power and profit. And they're not going to leave. Um, even when Biden started to pull people out, he immediately sent, like, a shit ton more troops there. Why? Well, because ISIS is now attacking openly, even though the U.S. government said that ISIS had been dealt with. Now we got the special K-ISIS variant. Because they can't have their previous response look bad. That would be bad. They have to make their previous response look justified. So instead of calling ISIS ISIS, they're calling it ISIS-K now. Um, and instead of calling it troops on the ground, they're calling it evacuation. So they sent troops to the Kabul airport and uh, evacuated a bunch of U.S. citizens and then a bunch of, like, you know, dogs were left over, so a bunch of people cried about that. It, it's real funny, you know. Um, but now the U.S. has a bunch of Afghani refugees that they're bringing in. And uh, those refugees will be, you know, uh, an economic benefit to those in power, to put it a little bit civilly. Uh, because basically they'll take whatever work they can get. So the U.S. needed a bunch of new workers because they disenfranchised the current people that were here um, and made it more profitable to stay home than to go out. But they still need those jobs filled. Otherwise, this whole thing comes crumbling down and they don't have the AI infrastructure to deal with it yet. So they brought in a bunch of refugees. Now they have more workers. Um, but the U.S. didn't just make the, uh, the, the groups that I listed already. It also made the Taliban. Because the Taliban wouldn't exist without the, the funding and support that the U.S. gave the Mujahideen. The Taliban was founded by Mujahideen and Mujahideen sympathizers. And the people who got... The money, the funding, the training, they would eventually become the Taliban. Not all of them, but enough of them. Um, and of course, U.S. was still funding Tim Osman or Bin Laden's camp in Coast, so they had no problem funding people who would eventually be their enemies. And the Taliban were harboring Tim Osman. Um, while he was destroying U.S. embassies. So they, they were already basically running cover for the U.S.'s guy so that the U.S. could ramp up tensions and have an excuse to go after him when uh, 
September 11th happened, despite no actual evidence that he had anything to do with it. Um, and a whole lot of shady shit with that, too. Like, uh, I'll include a link to a video that has been taken off YouTube, but is available now on Odyssey or the library blockchain. And y'all can decide for yourself. It'll be in the description there for you. But the general vibe that I want to give off is that the U.S. knew about all of this and was watching it happen. Why? Well, because they need enemies to fight. And that's why in 2001, fucking Bush literally gave them tens of millions of dollars. We, we promise we'll deal with the opium that's in the country. We'll do that. We promise. We promise. Um, and the U.S. government's like, yeah, we promise we're giving you this money so that you'll deal with opium. We, we definitely are doing it for those reasons, those complete kosher reasons. We just hate drugs so darn much. We haven't funded drugs before. Wait. Fuck. The Iran-Contra affair. Wait. Fuck. We did this with the, the Mujahideen as well. Fuck. We do this a lot. Ah, oh, shucks. Let's do it again. Um, so they did it. You know, and this was, you know, we hate drugs so darn much, but we'll use them as parts of experiments for mind control with the CIA and, like, the MK programs and a bunch of other shit. You know, we hate, we hate all this stuff, but we'll keep doing it. We'll keep doing it. We'll keep doing it. Because it gives us money. Because it gives us power. That's what the U.S. government does. So they gave the Taliban, like, tens of millions of dollars. And they're like, now, 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 you see, you'll be good there. If I see any opium in that country, I swear, man alive, I will be so pissed. And then they come back later and there's, like, still opium and, in fact, more of it, according to neighboring countries. And they didn't do anything with the tens of millions, but, um... Ban opium so that their stockpiles would increase in value and so that they could sell that shit. That's the vibes. And then suddenly there's no pretty much oversight after that. And the U.S. collapses the Taliban government. And then spends the next two decades, basically in conflict in Afghanistan. Very profitable, very powerful combat. And now, the U.S. government allegedly leaves Afghanistan again, all while the Taliban is saying, we're the government now again, and we again now will also then deal with the opium thing that we said we would deal with a while back. We'll deal with that now. We didn't deal with it before. But we'll deal with it now. We don't even need any funding. But that's where it starts to get a little bit fishy. A little bit fishy. Because the U.S. government leaves behind their bases. Doesn't demolish them. Doesn't do shit. Just leaves them. Leaves a bunch of weapons. Leaves a bunch of vehicles. Leaves drones. The Taliban has drones. They leave the Taliban a bunch of weapons. And ISIS-K and anybody else who wants to go. It's like an army surplus store, but actually death. It's fucking fishy, isn't it? I wonder, I wonder if the same government that sent them tens of millions of dollars would also send them a bunch of weapons later. After, like, being like, we're going to train the people who will be in charge of this government. And then we'll just leave a bunch of weapons. We'll leave in the middle of the night without saying anything, allegedly. And we'll just leave all these weapons. We just left them. We don't need them. That's not going to lead to anything bad. You smell bullshit? Like, they couldn't have <laughs> fucking exfiltrated their fucking weapons? 
Like, they couldn't have loaded him up onto ships and left. Like, they couldn't have had an orderly withdrawal. Like, they just had to do it just then, just then, just then. Huh? Why? You can't ask these questions. You can't ask why they left these weapons. You can only just acknowledge that they did. These weapons are worth a fuck ton of money. These bases are worth a fuck ton of money. If you ask me, it kind of sounds like foreign aid to allies who are going to do their bidding. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm not psychic. But I can tell you that uh, it kind of looks like the U.S. government gave the Taliban a bunch of weapons and bases and shit. And funded them. Armed, funded, and trained those people. Again. And now, there's going to be a period of strife. There's going to be a period of conflict. There's going to be increased tensions. The U.S. government is already droning people. It's already happening. It's already happening. Children are dying due to U.S. strikes. Now. And the U.S. is promising more. All the people in my fucking messages doing victory laps, they've got fucking, like, cum-soaked, moldy-ass wool over their eyes. Because I gotta tell you, this doesn't look like the U.S. is fucking leaving. And, and let me just read some stuff here, Okay. Um, first off, the AUMF has not expired. The U.S. can do whatever they want using AUMF. The authorization for the use of military force, that was 2001. When this whole shit started. And, uh, that's still there. They can use that. It hasn't expired. Nobody's repealed it. It's still there. Totally. I believe it. I believe they're gone. I believe they're staying out. I believe uh, everything Bill Gates and Fauci are doing is perfect and awesome for me. I believe it. I'm a good tax-paying citizen. Please. Please tell me why I should. All right? So then let me say antiwar.com Dave DeCamp quote we are not done with you yet Biden threatens more airstrikes against ISIS K in Afghanistan quote on Tuesday President Biden delivered a speech on the Afghanistan withdrawal that was completed on Monday and threatened more airstrikes against the country's ISIS affiliate known as ISIS K it's like a fucking Amazon program. It's like fucking just you sign. You're just an affiliate. It's like, you know, you use your ref code and destroy a village. They're, they're partners with the U.S. government. They just fucking exchange their referral codes and try to get soccer moms in on war bonds. It's wholesome when you think about it. Um... Since the U.S. closed down its major bases in Afghanistan, it has been flying airstrikes from outside the country, what the Pentagon is calling over-the-horizon capabilities. Well, we have what's called over-the-horizon capabilities, which means we can strike terrorists and targets without American boots on the ground, or very few if needed. We've shown that, cap that capacity in just the last week. We struck ISIS-K remotely. Biden said. 
And Isis K, we are not done with you yet. On Sunday, the U.S. launched a drone strike in Kabul that the Pentagon claimed killed ISIS-K suicide bombers, but witnesses on the ground told a much different story. The strike killed 10 civilians, including seven children, the youngest being two years old. On Monday, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki described this drone strike as successful and the U.S. was investigating civilian casualties. But the Pentagon has conceded it cannot dispute the account of the witnesses. In an interview with NPR Tuesday morning, Pentagon spokesman John Kirby also suggested U.S. airstrikes in Afghanistan might continue. He said the U.S. will continue to maintain the capabilities to bomb Afghanistan and use them if and when we need to. I get not wanting to believe me. I really fucking do. But like, come on, man. Sit down, fat. Biden isn't on your side. He never was. He never will be, and the war in Afghanistan is not fucking over. So I just wanted to say that. Because everybody's acting like he's some massive anti-war president for doing two months late what Trump would have gotten done in the May if he was keeping his promises. What should have been done a long time ago, what could have been done during the Obama administration if he truly cared about peace and being an authentic alternative to Republicans, and what didn't happen until now and hasn't even happened yet. But people want to act like Biden's some sort of peacenik. The Iraq war guy. The guy who bombed places before he gave you your stimulus checks. The guy who fucking ramps up tension in Ukraine right now. The guy who has a bunch of oversight committees for September 11th violence, even though there's no guarantee anything will even happen. But hey, it's not like the false flag could have anything to do with that, right? It's not like one of the initial authorizations for going in there was the fact that 9-11 happened, right? It's not like they could be planning something, and it's not like it could be what I said it was going to be, which is that they still have people there to usher in the new troops on the ground when they come right the fuck back in. It couldn't be that, because I'm just an insane conspiracy theorist. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never been enlisted. So the fact that I read public documents, the fact that I understand these things, the fact that I have all the information right there where people can find it, that doesn't matter. What matters is uh, that they can run victory laps because the MSM is telling them that it happened. I'm kind of suspicious of anyone who believes them now. How many lies have they told? How many war agendas have they supported? How many of the people on the boards and the advertisers to these multinational corporations are heavily invested in the military-industrial complex? How many of them would actually want to see this stopped? Because if the answer is none, then you kind of got to admit this fishy stuff might be a more diseased wet market than the Wuhan one ever could have been. And maybe you should listen to your local, friendly, neighborhood conspiracy theorist more often and smash the fucking state.